My name is James Taylor. I was born actually in the United States in 1940. I grew up uh, on a farm uh, in rural Iowa. And so my roots tend to be uh, in the working landscape. In my childhood, I, as I mentioned earlier, grew up on a farm. So a lot of it was related to um, helping out on the farm, doing chores, uh, engaging with the landscape, helping, working. Uh, a very interesting kind of landscape to work in. Uh, probably one aspect of it, of course, was the solitude of being in a rural area with a very low population, which um, I think serves me well today. I enjoy... Uh, both being with people and being away from people. In terms of my education beyond high school, I, uh, after quite a lot of consideration and consultation, I decided to enter into landscape architecture as a profession. And uh, I went to my local university, Iowa State University, which was basically agriculture and technology uh, in terms of its orientation. Um, there I uh, began to develop my uh, further interest in design, which I thought was there. Uh, I knew I didn't want to become a farmer, but I was searching for some way to use my creative skills, but also connect with, uh, with uh, horticulture and agriculture to some extent. So over time, it turned out to be the perfect match, and uh, I stuck with landscape architecture. My uh, advanced education was at the University of California at Berkeley. Uh, I had it in my mind to go directly on to graduate school after undergraduate school, uh, with the idea that I might want to teach ultimately at university. And those days, a master's degree was fully prepared you for professional education. Well, when I was going to Iowa State, I wanted to get a summer job um, after I became uh, third year and fourth year to earn some money, but also get some professional experience. So there was an opportunity in those days to work with the, uh, the uh, National Park Service. And the interesting thing about the Park Service is it was out of San Francisco and they the WODC worked throughout the Western US, which is a very beautiful, exciting place to, for me. So my first job was in Arizona, and I worked in the high desert, uh, in the painted, it's actually the painted desert uh, national park. And it was my first experience with desert life and the desert environment. I hated it when I first arrived there. But by the end of the summer, I was almost in tears when I left. I, I really fell in love with the desert. The second year, I worked at the head office in San Francisco, and that's where I made my connection with San Francisco, that I, I love this, that city as well. So Berkeley was a fairly easy choice for me when I went on to my next uh, degree. I've decided to stay in San Francisco and work for a while. My first job was with John Carl Warnicke and Associates, uh, again, a fairly prominent multidisciplinary firm, uh, architecture, but they had a division in landscape architecture. Uh, the interesting thing about John Carl Warren, uh, Warnicke was that he was a personal friend of Jack Kennedy. And so that contact got him some very good work, including the capital of Hawaii and uh, work that I, I did a little bit of work on around in Washington, D.C. So uh, I had this opportunity to change firms, and I had friends at uh, Royston, Hanamono, Mays, and Beck's firm, led by Robert Royston, a very prominent landscape architect. So I jumped at that because it gave me a, a chance to really work in a true landscape architectural practice. I uh, spent uh, three years there. I did a a short stint in the U.S. Army because at that time uh, Vietnam was starting to become a major issue. But as time went on, by 1966, I'd always had this dream of doing a tour of, of uh, Europe. 
they used to call it the grand tour, you know, in education. And I had a friend from Toronto who uh, was also interested in taking some time off and traveling around Europe. So that's what we did. Uh, it was a great education. We were very systematic in seeing the grand historic gardens as well as contemporary work. I took a f photographs with me as I went and uh, I was very fortunate because a couple of years later I was asked to teach a history course at the University of Guelph and I had all these wonderful pictures that I could use uh, firsthand. But as I was thinking of coming back, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Uh, the Vietnam War was becoming more and more of an issue. Uh, and uh, my friend from Canada contacted me uh, several times in Europe saying, I'm starting up my practice in Winnipeg. Would you like to come up and help me for a little while? Now, Winnipeg is due north of Iowa, where I was from. So working on the Canadian prairies was not a big shift for me in terms of the environment. And so I said, well, I'll come up for six months and uh, help you out. And over time, things begin to grow and develop. Uh, we went into Expo 67. I remember celebrating the 100th anniversary of Canada. It was a big thing in Winnipeg. We had social events and so on to celebrate that. And uh, later on, I went to Expo 67 to see some very high quality landscape architecture. We were just getting going in Western Canada. There was not a lot of great examples. So that was inspiring as well. And then as time went on, um, we took on some partners. We became more diversified and we reorganized as Lam Lombard North Group, which is a multidisciplinary firm. So we, we did it very differently from many of the firms in, in uh, Quebec or Ontario, we did it using the environmental sciences and landscape architecture and planning as opposed to engineering and architecture. So as a result, we developed skills and had uh, abilities in environmental impact assessment, which was again beginning to become a major area of work in the late 1960s. And we were also interested in working in the Northwest Territories and the Yukon on resource development projects. Uh, one of our early projects was on the Alberta tar sands, which is, you know, then it was just starting and we did an impact study for Shell. Uh, we did work related to highway development and pipeline uh, location in, uh, in the far north. And then began to apply a lot of the skills to Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan and uh, British Columbia. So as we developed as a company, we had branches in all those provinces. And so as a firm, we were probably the most, one of the larger, we were up to 40, 45 staff and most diversified on the environmental side of any firm in Canada. So we were sort of a, a very interesting model. Well, I think some of my uh, most important achievements in private practice was Initially being engaged in organizing a multidisciplinary practice that was based more on environment, environmental planning, and landscape architecture. Um, I think we tended to demonstrate that landscape architects and allied professionals could be a leading uh, prime consultant on many, many different kinds of projects. And I think we were successful in that regard. Uh, we won a number of awards, and probably my uh, my own personal greatest achievement was Fish Creek Provincial Park. Uh, it was important for a number of reasons. It was uh, the first urban provincial park in Western Canada, and perhaps in Canada. It was um, over 3,000 acres, so it was very large. Uh, you know, I compared with Stanley Park and Mount Royal and all those, it was probably bigger than most of those parks. Um, it was in the south end of the city, so it wasn't really central. It was a different kind of park. And in that uh, project, we were able to, uh, over time, apply a lot of McCarg's thinking. And Ian McCarg was one of my major influences, although I never had direct education from him. I worked with a number of his uh, uh, prodigies that came up and came to San Francisco. 
The first part of that project that was a major achievement was the public participation aspect, which was somewhat new in those days. This was about 1973-74. And uh, to my knowledge at the time, we had the greatest extent of public participation of any project probably in the world. We had over 100,000 uh, people through family uh, replies to our questionnaires that were published in the newspapers and other means that we contacted and connected with. Uh, our first recommendation to the governing board of this park was that we'd have no roads. And they said, what? They felt that we should have a road going through the middle of this park. It was a fairly sensitive landscape that had a creek going through it. We said it would ruin the uh, landscape. We'll have a series of nodes and people would walk in or bicycle in. And they thought about it for a little while and they said, yes, you're right. And the public agreed with us. Uh, the second thing is that we used the uh, McCargan principles in doing our assessment of the landscape and we designed it so that there was a perfect fit with the uh, environment and the uh, archaeology. Uh, so that was probably my no most significant project. I uh, worked on one other one that I thought was interesting. It was uh, the twinning of the Trans-Canada Highway through Banff National Park. And we were the first to implement uh, a digital-based map analysis to my knowledge, of any landscape architects. Uh, so uh, we had uh, one of my colleagues was, uh, and, and uh, one of our employees had just graduated from Harvard, worked with Carl Steinitz and understood map analysis and uh, the programming. So we applied that in doing map analysis to, to do the route location survey, and which turned out to be pretty successful. Uh, in the 1970s, uh, my partners decided that they would like to all retire by 1984. And I, why they picked 1984, I don't know. It was a very famous book uh, named 1984. And so we began to bring in new people uh, to design our practice so that we could step away by 1984. My interest was perhaps to go into academia. My other partners wanted to go into land development and other things. So by 1984, we had had some recessions. Um, we began, a lot of our work seemed to be repeats of the same thing over and over again. Because by then I'd been in practice for almost 20 years in either private practice with myself or with others. And so I had an opportunity to uh, get a position at the University of Guelph. Uh, at that time, the chair of the department happened to be my original partner, Cameron Mann. So this was uh, a full circle in my career, and I started over again with the same person, but in academia. I later became chair of that department uh, at the University of Guelph, which I enjoyed the administrative side. I began to do some publication and research. Um, on two occasions, I was seconded by the administration to do planning. The first was uh, to do a, a new master plan for our Arboretum. So by that I mean I was relieved from most of my teaching duties and then I led that uh, exercise. And then later on, uh, in the early 2000s, I did uh, a new master plan for the university to update that. And I enjoyed that because I worked directly with the vice president and senior administration and got out of the department for a while and came back. So uh, it's been very rewarding. I, uh, I taught countless students. Uh, and when I go to conferences, I see many of them and they say hello. I don't always remember their names, but they remember mine. And uh, we have a great, great, great discussion. And many of them have gone on to do really great things. Uh, some of my achievements teaching there. I was um, uh, granted a fellowship in the Council of Educators in Landscape Architecture, which was a high honor and was quite a surprise for me. Um, I won some teaching awards and um, some research awards for my work. And over time, uh, we began to do more community-based uh, research, primarily on uh, wind energy and wind farms. This is some of the last things I did while I was at the university there and became a bit of an expert in that area. So 
Uh, I'm still a, an emeritus professor at the University of Guelph. I super, supervise graduate students. I stopped teaching about four years ago, uh, but there's still possibly opportunities. If I had to uh, give advice, I would reflect back to the 1960s and my experience in those days as we were discovering environment, as environmental legislation was being adopted, as Ian McCarg was uh, developing the book Design with Nature, which I think is really seminal in terms of the practice of landscape architecture from my point of view. I, I would, again, try to reinterpret that for the general public, the fact that they need to think about design with nature, become more green, think about global warming and some of the other ne negative impacts that, that uh, mankind is creating. And uh, if I could provide that message, I think it might be very useful. Yeah. I would say if, if you're choosing landscape architecture as a profession, be sure that you have the passion and the creative energy to be a success. Over 25 years ago, I started a program here in Guelph, a foundation, along with two other colleagues, called Trees for Guelph. And over that period of time, we mobilized many of the schools in Guelph to plant trees every spring. And we have a whole system for that. We have a project coordinator that does this every year. And over the years, we've the school town have planted, now it's approaching 200,000 trees. So uh, I think I'd like to be remembered for that, the fact that I helped school children discover the joy of planting and planting trees and nature. And that uh, as you look around in Guelph, there are a few more trees than there were before I arrived. <laughs>